That's awesome. Thank you guys. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the last picture was so What I think is a wonderful event occurring tomorrow uh, evening. It's occurring at the at the Hamilton Church, right? I'll go take details that you can see at the yellow table and there's one over uh, behind over there that can outline various ways in which Canadians can help support this evil aggression. That's that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing all this. Can you just give us a quick uh, overview of what we are expected to see here today over this next hour or two as we're here to stand for Ukraine, which ultimately is showing us that uh, they're representing freedom for all of the world. I think we're going to hear from a number of passionate voices, many of them not Ukrainian, all of them equally disgusted by this aggression and wanting to make a difference and wanting to stand with Ukraine. Putin has united the world. This isn't a, a Ukrainian issue, it's a global issue. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak and humbled by it as well. Thank you. Well, is there anything more that you wanted to share with us today? Maybe something from your heart? Um, I, I just leave it open for you to share. Well, there have been a couple of interesting perspectives that my non-Ukrainian friends benefited from when I gave them the reaction. The first is, unlike Germany that dealt with its atrocities, Russia, the Soviet Union, never had that act of contrition. That absence is very visible in them, okay, in, in their aggression. The second thing is, uh, Google Ukrainian anthem in English. You're going to hear and see some amazing words that really, I think, give you context for why we are so defiant. Yes, Zelensky's a, you know, international star right now, so are the Klitschkos, but it's the Babas making the Molotov cocktails and the Babas that are going up and using laser-like sarcasm, coming up to the soldiers and saying, here, please, take these sunflowers, put them in your pockets. I want to see sunflowers growing from your grave. That resilience is united across our country. That's who we are, okay? And I guess it's never come across to many of my English friends because they haven't had the circumstances to demonstrate that, but what you're seeing is very indicative of the Ukrainian party. Absolutely amazing. And you'll find that there's a, 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 an amazing link that you can uh, connect the dots yourselves. There's a documentary on Netflix called Winter on Fire that really leads us into where we are today, where Ukraine is at, where the world is at. And also, I, I feel like it will help people understand the passion of Ukrainians and why the general population in Ukraine is fighting so hard. So thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you for sharing.
Reverends, spiritual leaders, honored guests, dear friends. We're going to start off with a prayer. I ask again, all those of faith leaders, please, to come forward. Father Zenit will be leading us. Understand that they have risen up unrighteously, and it will be impossible to oppose their motives unless you show up your help. Therefore, we who are sinful and unworthy pray unto you in repentance and with tears. Help us, O God, and deliver the land of Ukraine from the wrath of war. For the sake of glory of your name, may the enemy not able to say that God has forsaken them and there is none to deliver and save them. But let every nation understand that you are our God and we, your people, are always protected under your dominion. Reveal your mercy, O Lord, and work for us a sign for good, that they who are filled with hatred may see our steadfast faith and be humbled and shaken. Yes, O Lord, our Savior, our strength, our hope, our help. Remember not the transgressions of your faithful people, but visit your mercies and compassions upon your humble servants who pray and those who fight in defense of Ukraine, outnumbered though they be. Hear us who fall down before your deep compassion. With your mercy, enlighten and make glad the hearts of the authorities and principalities around the world and strengthen them by your mind in their resolve for peace. Bring judgment and justice upon those who provoke and make war and turn their impious boldness into fear and flight. Grant unto the just and God-fearing armed forces great boldness and courage to advance and overtake those with evil desires and give them strength to defeat them. And unto them who lay down their lives for faith and country Give them their tres forgive them their trespasses, and in the day of righteous reckoning, grant unto them incorruptible crowns in your heavenly kingdom. For you are our hope, our victory, and our salvation, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The most holy Theodokos, We stand with Ukraine in condemnation of the unspeakable horror of war that has befallen Ukraine. We stand together in solidarity with brave men and women who are laying down their lives in defense of their homeland. And we support their devotion to the principle of freedom and the right of every human being to live securely in peace. Burlington stands with Ukraine. Survivor Tom Lantos, a U.S. congressman, the veneer. 
<laughs> I will teach you, do not worry. <laughs> so last week in Hamilton, I began my speech by saying eight years ago, we began this journey by demanding our democratic rights and freedom to live how we wanted to in Ukraine. They killed a hundred of my countrymen purely for that reason eight years ago, and now they are continuing to do it in the thousands. Putin is terrified of us. Why is he terrified? Yes, we love democracy. We love our freedom, trust me. There is nothing more that we like than being free in Ukraine. I have witnessed many conversations about what exactly that means, and they're both saying the same thing. It's pretty awesome. However, the one thing he doesn't realize about Ukrainians, and especially the Ukrainians in the diaspora here, we organize. We organize ourselves, we organize our friends, and we have organized the non-Ukrainians too. They are 100% behind us. <laughs> that is why even if Putin takes one more step into Ukraine, we will always have Ukraine here. We will have Ukraine in the United States of America. Will we have a Ukraine in Britain? We will 100% have a Ukraine in Canada. Ukrainians came here 150 years ago. Our blood, sweat, and toil is still here. We love this country just as much as we love our country back home. Do not worry about that. Yes, we are citizens of the world. We are citizens of Canada. We are citizens of Ukraine, even though we may not have a passport. And we will always stand with our brothers and sisters back in Ukraine, whether they be Jewish, whether they be Christian, whether they be Muslim, whether they be Russian-speaking or Ukrainian-speaking, we will stand by them 100%. And now, because we are an organized bunch, I beg you to please call your local representative, your provincial representative, and your federal representative. If they don't want to close the skies over Ukraine, send us pilots, send us planes. We'll do it ourselves. We have been doing it ourselves for the past eight years. We will win, but we need help, and we need you to contact your representatives and get that message out there. Close the sky, yes, that's basically what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> now, for, for the non-Ukrainians, I will say Slava Ukraini, the response is fairly simple, it's only a couple syllables, it's Her oi im Slava. That's all you have to say, we're going to do it three times, okay? Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Slava Ukraini! Thank you very much for everyone for coming out today. In the English uh, translation, that's uh, glory to Ukraine, glory to its heroes. Okay, the uh, and Karina. Uh, I just would like to acknowledge Karina. So obviously, member of parliament for Burlington and minister of families, children, and social development. Karina is also chair of the Canada and the World Cabinet Committee and now sits on the Canada uh, on the Ukraine Incident Response Group. I, I on behalf of Father Denon and the entire parish, appreciate your overture of reaching out to us this week to explain what legislation was introduced this week to fast-track refugees. Your address in a 30-minute Zoom call gave more light to us than we could have ever imagined. It was very much appreciated. So thank you on behalf of my entire parish. Karina Bush.
we have been horrified and probably feeling helpless in the sense of the attack, the illegal attack, the illegal occupation and invasion of Ukraine by Russia that was unjustified, unnecessary, and for which thousands of people have already paid the ultimate sacrifice. We have been so devastated by this because inherently Canadians are connected to Ukraine and Ukrainians. We see this today. There are 1.3 million Canadians of Ukrainian heritage in this country. We stand for freedom-loving, peace-loving, democracy-loving, human rights-loving people everywhere on the planet, and we must stand in solidarity with them no matter what. We prioritizing Ukrainians fleeing violence to come to Canada. I am so proud of the hundreds of people in this community who have contacted my office to say, how can I help? I want to help. That's what Canadians do. And that's what we're standing for. And we need to keep doing that. I have a button here made by high school students at Notre Dame High School. They're raising funds for the Red Cross. The Canadian government will match up to $10 million for the humanitarian response. Where are these high school students? They're right here. Raise your hand. One of them happens to be Stephen's son. He's very proud, as he should be. But I'm proud of them. We're all proud of them because that's what Canadians do. We step up in a time of crisis. We reach out to our brothers and sisters in their time of need, and we will help them. I have another ribbon here from Vera and Olivia, grade three and five students from Lakeshore Public School who wanted to do something in support of Ukraine. And why does that matter? Because the pictures, the images, the solidarity that is being demonstrated here is being sent to people in Ukraine. This gives them courage. This gives them hope. This gives them resilience to stand up and to fight for their rights and to fight for their freedoms. The government of Canada has sent legal aid. We have sent financial aid up to half a billion dollars to support the recovery in Ukraine. We've committed a hundred million dollars in humanitarian assistance, and we will continue to be there for the people of Ukraine. together with all of our residents here and I, I do want to just echo how important it is for us to come out and show our visible support. I want to read you 
a letter that I received from a Ukrainian resident here in Burlington about why this matters, why it matters to fly the Ukrainian flag, to make all of the signs that you've all made, all the kids that have come out love this, uh, love all your signs. Uh, it, it is a true community family effort of all ages and it matters. And I want you to just know how much it matters. Veronica wrote to me and my team, Dear Mayor Mead Ward, I want to express my sincere gratitude and appreciation to you. I was born in Ukraine and immigrated here in 1996. Seeing the Burlington Pier lit up in blue and yellow colors last night filled me with so much hope for my country, my family, who are still there. I have shared a picture with my family who are still in Ukraine, and I can honestly tell you, it has lifted many spirits. Knowing that they have support overseas gives them so much hope. Thank you. You did that. You did that. It matters. Here, lit blue and yellow, as long as the Ukrainians need our support to stand with them. Until Links. We will fly the Ukrainian flag on our flagpole until Putin leaves. Millions of Canadians have served in our armed forces in, in the cause of freedom. Today, our thoughts and prayers are with Ukrainians, men and women who have taken up arms to defend the country. Many have already given their lives in this cause, and we must think of the innocents, women, children, and men who are the victims of Russian bombing and military assaults. The Ontario government has donated funds in humanitarian aid to Ukraine. And our community here today is so generous in its support. In my own riding of Oakville, North Burlington, St. Joseph's and St. Baldemir's churches are leading the efforts to help, receiving donations of medical supplies and other need supports. We know Ukrainians are decent and hardworking people, and Premier Ford has stated that we will welcome anyone who comes to Ontario, whether to live permanently 
or until they can return safely to their homes and families. Today, we honor the bravery of Ukrainians fighting for their homeland. They are an inspiration to millions across the world, and we pray that justice will prevail, that Ukraine and its people are restored to liberty in all of its territory. Slava Ukraini! Good afternoon. Like many of you, my heart is very, very heavy for the people of the Ukraine. But it's also filled with hope. The hope that we're seeing happening right here in our own civic square. And speaking with Father Zanin, he told me that each and every prayer is lifted from our own community right here to the people of Ukraine. And each prayer has the ability to save another life. I want to remind everyone that we have right behind us Veterans Square, a square dedicated to signify the commitment to peace, democracy, and freedom that so many have laid down their lives to preserve and protect. We think about those in the Ukraine who are losing their lives in this pursuit, and we can remember them right here in Veterans Square. This is a moment in our time to remember how connected we are as a city, a province, a country, and a world. We're also very much connected to our past. I invite White Eagle to share with you a beautiful story. Good afternoon. I would like to share with you the connection between Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Um, Ukraine has been
standing with Ukraine. Slava Ukraini! I also want to give a couple insights that many non-Ukrainian friends have benefited from when they've approached me and asked me, you know, for my opinion in terms of what's going on. The first is to point out that unlike Germany, which had a powerful reconciliation with their evil past, no such reconciliation ever occurred in the Soviet Union or the Russian Federation of Imprisoned Nations. That's my term. Okay. So, that gives you context for why these soldiers are brandishing the Soviet flag, totally thinking they're coming into a, company, a country to liberate these people who don't want to be liberated. The defiance that they're seeing is unimaginable to them because they've not had that conscious and that reflection that occur. So, I want to give you context for that defiance, okay? And it's been witnessed from, obviously, the stars. Uh, President Zelensky, the Klitschkos, Miss Ukraine 2015, all of them, you know, out there in the field brandishing combat. But what about the babas, okay? Mm -hmm. The grandmothers who are making Molotov cocktails, who are actually coming up with amazing like sarcasm. Son, don't eat them. I want to see sunflowers grow in your dead body. Okay, <laughs> that defiance unites us as a people. And I guess you know, it's nice that it's coming out now, but it's always been there. And I think the final thing I wish to do is just give some insight into a source of that energy. Our anthem is Shchenev Madel Ukraina, and we'll be moving to that shortly as well as the Canadian anthem. But what it means is Ukraine's glory has not died, nor her freedom. In 1862, Pavel Chubinsky, Ukrainian poet, composed a poem that has quickly changed and gained popularity within Ukrainian circles at the time for its patriotic exhortation and longing for freedom among Ukrainian people. A year later, Father Mikhail Verbinsky, Ukrainian Catholic priest and prolific composer of the time, composed the poem in, 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 into words and song. The song gained notoriety, and it's in the interest of time, it only became an official anthem in 2003, but it's been the unofficial rally cry. In the interest of brevity, I'm not going to read it in English, but I will encourage you to Google Ukrainian anthem English lyrics. And now I introduce uh, Marichka Duncan, who is the choral director of the Public Choir, to lead us in both anthems.
Ben. His final remarks, there he is, a pierogi and sausage dinner event. <laughs> <laughs> but Rowley wouldn't have this. <laughs> it's Friday, March 25th, uh, 1 to 6 p.m. It's $12 for eight pierogies, one link of sausage, mm. cooked sauerkraut. Anyway, it's at our church, Holy Protection, and the proceeds are going to support Ukraine. There's some information here. Come on up and snap a photo of it. I'm not going to read all of this. No one's going to remember an email. Okay. I want to remind the students of the gathering that's taking place at the Church on the Mountain tomorrow from 6 to 8. Um, and then there are fundraising opportunities. So there's at least, well, there's one here, there's one at the yellow table, and there's one I think that's floating around. Please do support these three charities. They're all legitimate. And, uh, they will go to help the right cause. Once again, thank you, Burlington. Slava Ukraini! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why you want to talk. Wow. <laughs> oh, we didn't know you were talking today. That's so awesome. Oh my gosh, how wonderful. Oh, it's funny because I was just telling them the story about this friendship. Yeah, yeah. So they said, come on, you gotta come. No, and I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, that's amazing, eh? What does that? What is it for? First Nations. First Nations yes. Yes, this area. Yeah, they might have already. Yeah. <laughs> Nice guy. <laughs> 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 you don't have to go looking. 